Oh, yeah, yeah. It's it's Sky, like they're not looking at you. Turn. Yeah. You it's can't one shot have what your actual skill power is normalized until you actually get the normalized. From one LMG, get the other LMG. <laughs> he ran right into me. Do you have it's more? So than, where are you at? Where are you them. testing it? the skill power? Because I, I, I've run into what you're. Uh, You're in normal as though, right? Okay. So I think it it lowers it, but it doesn't like show you what your actual lower it is or something like that. An agent needs assistance. Boost. About to come online. Oh my god, this is so Alright, I'm healing us, I'm healing us. Ah. Boost now Fuck, you guys save me. Anybody's here. I know. Wow, they just let me cap it. They could. Oh, this is not fucking. Yeah. I forgot this was dumb. <laughs> I'm just like PvP. Team Deathmatch. I'm coming, shotgun. guys what's up what's up this is my first build video for division 2 it's literally day one of the patch got a sick AR build that I've been using day one uh, had lots of success especially since the meta is pretty fragmented right now a lot of people are relying on their LMG builds from pre-patch a lot of people are finding that clutch still works so this is a really good build to counter both of them and I'll explain why in a bit but for right now let's get into the build got a custom p416 uh, this is a little bit of a toss-up. Uh, I've been using Measured with Allegro and Overlap. Uh, I've had a lot of people that have told me that running Close and Personal is also really good. Uh, Allegro is obviously mandatory, but uh, it's really a choice between Measured and Close and Personal depending on your playstyle. And uh, for the secondary, I use the Nemesis Holstered. Works really well, and it covers your long range as well if you want to be able to snipe somebody out. It gives you a really good option. I've also seen people that will use the chatterbox. Uh, typically, if they're using close and personal, they'll use the chatterbox, um, but I've seen them. Uh, it's really just a matter of preference. For the sidearm, I'm using a tactical M911. M1911. Uh, the main reason I'm using this is for the protected reload. I don't really use the sidearm even to finish people off. The main reason I use it for protected reload is because it's really nice because unlike at LMGs you do have to reload pretty constantly and the 10% bonus armor since you do have a lot of armor uh, post patch really does help. Uh, typically you would use a premeditated shotgun uh, but since this is a on the ropes build you're not allowed to use that just due to stat spread. Getting into the meat of the build, got an ongoing directive mask, uh, pretty decent armor roll, could be a little higher but the main thing you want skill power and health you do need pretty high rolls for both of them in order for this build to work and then obviously got a generic mod. Secondly you got the Fenris. You need uh, Berserk and Vital. Those two are pretty um, set in stone. Health roll really high. Armor roll could be a little higher. Weapon damage definitely needs to be a little higher. I actually have a 13.5 weapon damage chest that I'm saving for this build uh, but I do need to find another Fenris chest piece to actually roll that. Getting to the holster. Got Gila holster. Gives a nice boost to armor. And it has a really high health roll. And then it's got skill power. Two mod slots for offensive is really, really necessary because we're really cutting it close with seven uh, firearms and seven electronics. But it works out pretty well. Getting into the knee pads, got Providence, and you really, really do want capacitive. Um, this is best in slot for this build because you are kind of relying on your heals for your sustain. Um, your heals stacking with your survivalist medkit is a very important aspect of this build. That's what gives it a lot of sustain. Getting into the gloves, you do have ongoing directive with skill power and uh, assault rifle damage. The skill power isn't really necessary, it's just there to give the extra uh, yellow. Ideally, I would probably have a higher skill power roll, but it's not really that necessary. The reason that I'm not using something like a Raldi 
or something like that with precise or devastating is because I found that um, from all the other mods and all the other uh, slots for gear that you're using, this is the best place to put ongoing directive for this build, um, especially since it gives a lot of damage with on the ropes and a lot of damage with berserk. You don't really need precise, um, especially since it's kind of a hit fire meta right now with all the LMGs. Um, so I think that if you were going to run something other than this, I would probably run a roll D with uh, Devastating. I probably wouldn't go Precise. Um, for the backpack, you do have Providence, so you get the two-piece for the health. Uh, it does have good weapon damage, good health, skill power on the ropes, and you do need the second vital to stack more into health. And then you have uh, Offensive Mod slot as well. So that's basically the gist of the build. Getting into the, a little bit of the specifics here with the skills. Uh, I am running it with about a 40% heal mod with 3 ammo. Um, this can be switched out. Uh, I've run it a lot in Conflict, and for some reason in Conflict, it does lower your skill power a little bit. Ideally, I have a 5 ammo mod, and then basically the same, a little bit less heal. But 5 ammo is definitely better than 3 ammo with a slightly bigger heal. It's only 0.3%, so it's not going to matter too much. And then for booster, I'm just running booster because I like the movement speed, especially since I play a lot of conflict. So it makes sense to boost your team to the middle faster, get to those fights faster. If you're going to be running a little bit more of a solo or a DZ build, I would definitely recommend EMP Pulse because uh, it's such a short range typically that it goes on cooldown instantly because you're not scanning anybody. Um, so it makes it really nice. And then getting into the meat of the build for the stats... We have about 20.9 uh, weapon damage, no crit chance at all. We don't really need it for this build. You're going straight into weapon damage. Headshot damage is 57, plus you got the 25 or the 10 from um, Nemesis, depending on if you're ODZ or if you're normalized. And this build has a lot of innate damage, so you're going to be dealing a good amount of damage right off the bat, just due to the rolls that it's got with the bonuses. I am running it with Survivalist. You can run it with um, Sharpshooter if you'd like. That's a matter of preference. I believe that Sharpshooter lost a lot of value since everybody started to hit fire a lot more. So you're not be you're not going to be able to sit there and ADS and try and get the headshots that you normally would. This build excels against clutch builds because it has a ridiculous amount of damage to health with ARs being the primary, as well as some of the armor, uh, the health damage that you get from rolls on mods and stuff like that. And as well as that, if you're face trading with them, you're most likely going to have on the ropes and berserk active. So that's another 75% damage that you're getting on top of all the damage you see here. So it's a really, really good build. So if you guys liked it, let me know, try it out, see how it works for you. And I'll see you in the next video.